we've talked about position and displacement, but believe it or not, there's a third quantity to describe positions and changes in positions, and that is distance. So distance is how far an object actually travels. Okay? So to think about distance, we're going to do our third example, example three, of Hal's motions. And this one is we're going to take the ramp and we're going to tilt it. And Hal is going to start at 10 centimeters. So let's say this is the origin, this is zero, and here's 10. And I'm going to push him up to 40 centimeters, it's maybe a little higher, but there's 40 centimeters, and he's going to go all the way back to zero. All right, so let's look at it again. He started at 10, this is zero, started at 10, went up to about 40, and then made it back down to zero. Okay, so let's plot it, draw it, do the equations, and everything. Let's see. So first, we could draw the demo real quick. So just to make sure you see what's going on, right? So in this case, here's Hal. Um, Hal started there at 10, but this is where I caught him at zero, and he's gonna make his way up to 40. And just so it's clear, even though I tilted it, now we're just making the x-axis also be tilted. Okay, so there's the origin of the x-axis, and he's moving up the tilt. Okay, no need to do trig yet. Okay. So we pushed him up, and he went up this way, and then he came back down this way. And that was the path. Right. Let's look at the graph. The kinematics plot would have time there, and x there, and this is the origin. All right. And we know he started at time equals zero, he started at 10, and he's going to make his way up to 40. And it's sort of this smooth transition thing. We're getting ahead of ourselves. He was accelerating under a force. But I can kind of draw what it's going to look like. It's going to look like this. Right? He's going to start at 10, make his way up to 40, and then smoothly come down. Should be more curved than that, uh, down to zero. But all we really care about now is think about thinking about the position, the displacement, and the distance. Okay? So position is plotted. We don't need to think about position too much. So this is a plot of the position. It's really little displacement vectors past the origin, but position. Let's think about the displacement. Think about displacement. We need an initial time and a final time. So we're going to say it was at t equals 0, and we'll call this t, say, as 5 seconds. Right? So we have t initial equals 0, t final equals 5. We don't even really need the times, because all we really care about is the displacement delta x equals what? x final, uh, which was 0, 0 minus x initial, which was 10. Minus 10, we get minus 0 minus 10, negative 10. And since it's a vector, and I put a number, and I can't put a vector hat on a number, that'd be kind of weird. I'm going to put my i hat. Just means along the x-axis. So the displacement was negative 10. If I were to draw that displacement vector, it would look like this. There it is. The displacement from initial to final is negative 10. All this other crazy stuff happened, but it doesn't matter. Displacement just cares about initial and final. But what if we wanted the distance? All right, the distance, which we usually label d to distinguish it from position and displacement, which is x, the distance is really just how far it went. Then there's really no simple mathematical formula to get distance that I'm going to tell you about. Okay? You just have to look and say, literally, how far did Hal feel like he went? Right? So he went from 10 to 40. So that was a distance of 40. And then he turned around and went from 40. I'm sorry, he went from 10 to 40. That's a distance of 30. <laughs> right? He went 30. And then he turned around and went back to 0. He went another 40. But he turned around and went the other way, but you don't make it negative. Distance doesn't care about positive or negative. It just cares about how far you went. So he went 30 plus 40, he went 70. And if we want to do units, they're both in centimeters. Okay. So it's the same path, or it's the same trip, it's the same experiment, but you can see that the displacement was much smaller. It was small and negative, whereas the distance always positive. It's just how far it went. You can think about this in your everyday life as well. 
I uh, turned on my exercise tracker and tracked myself coming here today from my house to here. Right? So now uh, I'm showing you then the map. So there you can see my little path of all the distance I went. It's about uh, three miles or so. But now here I'm also going to put on there the displacement vector. Right? So now you can see the displacement. And of course that's shorter, because right? that doesn't have all the little turns and everything. But my car says I went the distance. And but in physics, I would say my displacement. I would just draw the other vector. So there you can kind of see the difference. This can be done really for any path that runs around different directions. All right, and now I'm a little concerned. My exercise tracker is telling me you know, not to run so fast because I'm going to have a heart attack. So I should not have used my exercise tracker from that drive. But for physics education, I was willing to risk it. Okay, so that's what distance is. Now let's think about how we can use it uh, to describe another kind of velocity. <laughs> 